My ex-wife, Sandy, and I got married young. Too young. I wasn't done with university. She was fresh out of high school. We were pressured by our families. It's a religious thing. We didn't live together until a year and a half later when I finished my degree. I'm not in great shape. I'm not particularly handsome, although my mom says I am. I also spent much time at work during the first three years of my career, getting a running start. I am ashamed to say I neglected Sandy. When we had our daughter, I re-examined my life and made them a priority. Unfortunately, it was too little, too late. Sandy left me. It hurt. It hurt even more when she moved on and left our daughter with me. She said that she was still young and that her family and I had taken years of her youth away and now it was her turn to enjoy it. I felt a lot of guilt over what she said. For the record, I didn't particularly want to be married either. I said that I didn't want to hold her back so I wouldn't take child support. We went to court and I got full custody. She got visitation, which she only very rarely used, like four times last year. It's been five years and my daughter and I are doing fine. I have a great job now, and I can work from home. I take my daughter to school, pick her up, and leave my work in my office when we're together. I've also withdrawn from my church my parents attend. Recently, Sandy's been bugging me about parenting decisions. I told her that I would raise my daughter as I saw fit. She said that she was her mother and deserved a say. Her husband chimed in that I wasn't doing a proper job of parenting, and that they were considering going back to court for custody. As soon as he mentioned lawyers, I hung up and called mine. She's a bulldog. She immediately filed for child support, including back child support for the last five years. I've been hearing from everyone that I'm cruel, going after her for money. Full disclosure, I make close to five times their combined income. I don't need their money, but if I can use the law to get her to leave us alone, I will. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. This woman abandons her husband and daughter to go enjoy life and wants to give advice on raising your daughter? I don't think your attorney is out of line for filing for child support and or back support. You're sending a message loud and clear to back off. Chances are the ex hasn't changed that much and is now feeling the heat of having to explain to others why she doesn't share custody with her daughter. It's also due to religious reasons. Going in hard like you did was a good move. Keeping with the quarterly visits is good for now or until your ex proves she will not abandon your daughter again. That kind of rejection lasts a lifetime. Every little one needs to know that they're worth fighting for. So keep fighting for her. I got the vibe they would try to take the kid and get child support money since OP is doing so well. They see money because he earns five times their combined income. It wasn't a smart move to let them know your income. Do not underestimate the greed for money. She can't play mom when it's convenient for her. If she wants to be the mom, she also needs to take on the financial responsibility and tell her husband to shut the heck up. It's a strategy of logical self-protection too. The best defense is a good offense and all that. If the ex and her new husband file for custody first, there's a risk that the judge might look at them and say, well, OP's managed well enough on his own so far, but clearly, the child would do better in a two-parent family, and the child deserves not to lose out on their current lifestyle, so OP needs to pay child maintenance. The ex-wife's new husband sees that kid as a cash cow, whereas if OP files for child maintenance first, then any custody claim the mom makes is going to be seen under the shadow of that five-year abandonment of her legal responsibilities as a parent. To make that claim for custody, she'll first need to prove she's serious about parenting by paying off that debt. LP got a great lawyer. The ex-wife is experiencing a mess-around-and-find-out moment and a shocked Pikachu face that her plan backfired. My young adult daughter died 13 years ago. We share a name, as it's a family name. The tradition has always been that this is the name given to the first daughter of the first daughter of each generation for over 100 years. My mom, my daughter, and I share this name. When my niece became pregnant six years ago, 
She asked if she had a girl, if she could use the name. Note that she didn't ask to use it as a tribute. She's been jealous of the tradition, not including her for as long as she's known of it. I said no. It would break my already broken soul to share her name with another family member. No one was happy that I selfishly said no, but nothing came of it since she had a boy. Fast forward to yesterday, when my mom told me that my niece is again pregnant. This time it's a girl, and she's already named her. Insert dead daughter's family name here. My mom reminded me that it's her name too, and she wants to pass it down. One, it's my name as well. Two, it's still my daughter's name even though she's dead. Three, my daughter has a surviving sister who will never be able to name her potential future daughter in honor of her dead sister. I don't expect my mother, sister, or niece to understand why I feel as I do, as they have never lost a child. That said... I don't think it's too hard to consider that if a grieving mother says you may not use her daughter's name, you probably should respect that and choose another name without question and certainly without guilt. It already tears the gaping hole in my soul wider open each time I hear a mother calling her daughter by what's also my daughter's name. But now my family's creating this lifelong in-my-face agony that they could easily prevent. And they've done it knowingly. I feel utterly betrayed by my family, especially by my mother. She went behind my back along with my niece and sister, knowing that I begged that my daughter's name not be used. When I came unglued on her yesterday, my mom told me that if my surviving daughter has a daughter in the future, she can use it too. Having the same name's perfectly fine for two kids in one family. I'm floored. Am I the idiot for being so upset and saying no? Uh, why? Two cousins naming their kid the same thing? Not a problem, at all. Heck, for at least 18 years, you've had at least three people with that name in your family, and it didn't cause any problems. It's a family name. Your daughter can't name her kid after her sister, and your niece can name her kid after your grandmother. Who are you to say no? Do you want to kill the tradition that's gone on for generations just because your late daughter isn't the one using it? Get over yourself. Your niece isn't jealous. You are. You don't want to allow other people their family history. You want to act like it belongs to you alone. Losing a child is unimaginable, and my heart breaks for you, but you're visiting misery upon others for no good reason. You are the idiot. Yeah, you just said hearing the name kills you inside. But if the sister used the name later on, somehow that wouldn't kill you? It would only kill you if your niece used it. This is your name and your mother's name. You cannot argue that you fall apart every time you hear this name. It's your name. Did you change your name after your daughter died? If not, drop this BS argument. Your daughter died 13 years ago. Calling yourself a grieving mother right now to guilt and bully your niece into making decisions about her child's name is inappropriate. The fact that you're using your daughter's death as a weapon and means to manipulate someone is inappropriate. Update. I've read all the comments and the consensus is, I am definitely in the wrong. Honestly, after getting all of this feedback, I think I am the problem. I'm wrong. And yes, I'll be talking long and hard with my therapist about this experience and how it's opened my eyes. Thank you. I, 32 female, have been split from my daughter's pre-tween, dad, 31, for over seven years. We split when she was almost a year old and have finally become amicable with one another about co-parenting. A month ago, his fiance, 21 female, announced she was pregnant. My daughter was thrilled to have a new sibling on the way, as I've decided not to have any more. Our custody arrangement is currently every other weekend, but for the most part, if he asks to take her to something, I have no problem with that. It's not often reciprocated, but that's another topic. Now on to the issue. Her stepmom's first baby appointment is next week. Her dad asked if he could pull our daughter from school to take her with him so she could see what the process is like. I said no, I didn't think it was appropriate, that she wouldn't be having a stomach ultrasound, 
and that if he wanted to take his daughter to the gender appointment, that was fine. Still, with this being the initial one, and just checking to see how far along, how mom and baby are doing, etc., I didn't feel that that was something she needed to miss school for. He then told me that I was being a controlling, jealous witch because I wasn't having any more, and I was keeping our daughter from seeing the miracle of life happen, along with the process of how pregnancy works. He then went on to say he wanted her to come to every appointment, not just the initial one, and that it's his daughter too, and he gets a say on what she's exposed to as well. Again, I said I understood where he was coming from, but she was also young and didn't need to be at every appointment. Again, if she wanted to go to the gender ultrasound, that was completely fine with me. She still had school and doesn't need to miss it for these appointments. She's been beginning to ask questions about where babies come from. I've done my best to answer honestly, and she knows about periods and that there are different anatomies that, when put together, create life. However, I just don't feel like she needs to miss school to attend her stepmom's doctor's appointments. My friends are torn. Some say I should just let her go and not hold her as a pawn. Others side with me and think it's a little strange that she doesn't need to be at every single one even the initial one. So, am I the idiot? Yikes! The biggest reason to not take a child to these early OB appointments is because there's still such a high chance of pregnancy loss. There's absolutely no reason to put a child her age in a situation where she's potentially going to witness that tragic news. Let her keep some ultrasound pics, take a video of the heartbeat if OB allows it, involve her that way, and sure... Bring her along to the 20-week anatomy scan. You are not the idiot. Exactly. I was at a routine pregnancy appointment once when I found out I'd lost my baby. Everything had been great until then, and I was past the usual risk in my second trimester. Aside from that, I was so grateful I didn't have my kids with me. It's a doctor's appointment. They may talk or ask about things you won't want to discuss in front of a child, Having a toddler with you is one thing because you don't have a babysitter. It's super irresponsible to take your child out of school for a medical exam like this. Your ex sounds unhinged. That's why he's with the 21-year-old now. That's where his mental and emotional maturity is. Don't engage in jealous or liar comments, but make a note of them. I communicate only by text so you have a record. It's not holding your child as a pawn either, to say they shouldn't miss school to attend their stepmom's doctor's appointments. That's pretty crazy. Though, you say you guys are now amicable about co-parenting. He doesn't seem to share this feeling. I, 30 female, have a sister, 20, named Jessica. We both had a child a few years ago, and they're three days apart. I had an excellent job out of college, and so did my husband. During my son's, Bart, first Christmas... We ensured he had everything. My sister saw my Facebook post and began yelling at me, saying that I was rubbing everything in her face and that she couldn't afford to get anything for her son, Peter. My parents are well off, but they told my sister that they would support only her and not the child and would only be grandparents and nothing more. She refused to go after the father for child support because she loved him, but he already had three children by the time she had Peter. I just told her I worked for everything I had, and if she had waited, this could have been her life too. She posted a Facebook post about how she has no help, but instead of getting support, the bullies at her school had told her she should have not had intimacy, so she just deleted the post. Two years later, we both were pregnant again. She once again had a child by a deadbeat. He was a married 40-year-old. Our parents tried to press charges, but she wouldn't give them any information because he kept promising her that he would eventually leave his wife for her once she turned 18. This never happened. That year, Christmas came around and she called my phone, screaming that our parents wouldn't give her any money for gifts and that they only got her children two gifts apiece. I told her they were doing the job of grandparents. She called me a witch and then hung up. Fast forward to now, every year we take two vacations, one out of the country, and one to a different state. Peter began asking about the trips because we sent my parents a picture and they hung it on the fridge. Jessica told him that he would come with us this year without asking me. 
I would be happy to, but Jessica tells her son untrue things about my family, so her son bullies my son because he thinks my son stole his life. I told Jessica that would not happen and asked her why she thinks she's so entitled. She broke down crying and right in front of me told Peter that I don't like him and that's why he can't come. Peter called me a witch. My parents were also in the room and asked where a young child his age learned that language. Instead of disciplining her son, my sister said that I was being a witch and that I should have adopted her son when I saw her struggling all those years ago. This happened a week ago and we're on vacation now. My sister kept calling me and I finally had enough. I told her that if she didn't go around having intimacy with the whole school, she could have had this life and to stop calling me unless it was an emergency. Since she's been posting on Facebook, my parents told me not to worry about her. But as a big sister, I feel bad that I could have done more. Your sister is an idiot, but there's something wrong with your parents. She got pregnant as a young teen with a deadbeat who already has or had three kids. Two years later, she was pregnant by another deadbeat and there were no criminal charges. And your parents didn't do anything again? Why were the parents not parenting? File the charges. Even today is not too late. Child support is there for a reason, to support the child's financial needs. Yeah, that's what's got me too. OP is blaming her sister for her parents' failures. OP, WTF were your parents doing besides neglecting a teenager? Her life choices now will have nothing to do with you, but as a sister and her parents, you guys should have guided her when she got pregnant the first time. I understand you might have your own problems with the birth and pregnancy of your own child, but your parents could have done much better. I, 38 male, and my wife, 39, are doing pretty well for ourselves. We're not by a Bugatti rich, but we're doing well. Most of my wife's family lives in the U.S. Her parents have done pretty good for themselves and are retired. On the other hand, my wife's siblings are a more complex story. Her brother's in pharmacy school, and her other siblings, four of them excluding the brother I just mentioned and my wife, are job hopping. And my wife's words, not mine, seem to have no determination for some direct in their lives. Well, one of her sisters, 20 or 21, got pregnant. She said she's sure she has possibilities of who the dad might be. But in this case, I feel like possibilities is a very bad word here. And my wife, upon hearing the news, immediately jumps to how we're going to help her. She also talked about how we can help with child care. We live in Georgia, and her family is very tight-knit here, monetary aid, etc. And I tell her, with whose money? Because I know you're not talking about my money. She gave me the stink eye and continued on. And even though, after all of our expenses, we have a bit to play with, I like having that bit to play with. And I sure as heck don't want to give it to someone who doesn't even know who the father of her own kid is. I told my wife all this, and she just called me selfish and walked away. So yeah, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. And I don't like how your wife unilaterally decided to give your joint money to her sister. As for knowing or not knowing who the father is, that's really irrelevant to the story. You're saying it to make her look bad, which is unnecessary. Having a baby you can't afford at age 20 is irresponsible enough. Supporting her family is a never-ending treadmill. Do you really want to get on it? Not knowing who the father is is irrelevant to the story? I disagree. It really is relevant because the sisters should be getting paternity tests for all the daddy candidates and then filing for child support so she doesn't need as much assistance. And how many possibilities are there for goodness sake? Whoever is the father needs to take responsibility, not UOP. Your wife will end up enabling her.